I got a video for us to react to, per usual. It's called Underground Rappers That Ruined Their Rep. And I already know what it's gonna say just based off of this thumbnail. It's gonna, it's gonna talk about SSG Kobe. I think it's gonna talk about, let's see, let's go back to their page. It's gonna talk about Sofago. I wonder who else is gonna say. Who else is on the thumbnail? Somebody in the back. I can't remember. Who is that in the middle? But yeah, definitely they're gonna talk about the downfall of SSG Kobe. He's been quiet. I know he dropped an EP soon after the whole allegation, like a couple months. I don't know if he can make a comeback though. Jace, true. Jace too. Yes. Oh, that's Tokyo's event. Oh, for sure. I feel like we haven't heard from him in a long time. It's been like three years, bro. I remember he was popping off during the pandemic with the, I can't remember the song at this point. But then everybody just kind of like cut him off. And then somebody in Discord was telling me he was signed to Opium. I'm like, sorry, I'm not hating on the bro, but there's no way, especially with the allegations that Opium members already got, particular couple of them, or one, or however many it is, they're not going to just sign them. That's going to be a headline in itself. Like, they, he doesn't have to drop music. It's just like Opium signs. You know what? That's not a good look. Underground artists are becoming the new generation of go-to music, mostly known as the underrated artists who have the potential to become the next big thing in the music industry. Having the chance to be placed in Billboard charts, win Grammy awards, and convert to being labeled as a mainstream artist can sometimes get interrupted by allegations that in today's video I found just a few under- Editing's fire, by the way. Underground artists who managed to ruin their reputation, starting off with rapper Sofago. Growing up inside Atlanta, Sofeg will have a passion for his music around the ages of 8 or 9 years old. Is it technically ruining your reputation though? I feel like he didn't have any allegations. He just he just waited too long, as we already know. And I guess maybe because he was supposed to be the top guy and then Yeet stole it. So is that ruining reputation? Like I guess, yeah, I guess nobody or a lot of people don't want to even listen to the next stuff. Like nobody cares or less people care. But we're heavily be Mario Judah too, yeah. His whole PR stunt with like he beat his girl or whatever, that, and then and then he came back saying like no, he loved her and it was just a skit and it wasn't real. It's was like you drew contra. I, I understand you want to be controversial, and sometimes that well, actually all the time the negative stunts always blow up more but then it's just hard to redirect that into a positive way without being corny and just like lying you know but yeah mario judah's done for i mean i never really liked his music in the first place i'm not hating on it it just wasn't my cup of tea but i'd, I'd like to see what happens if he can actually do his thing and I, I think he had to get independent began to pursue his music career in his teenage years and record through a software called GarageBand. It is not known to when he first began posting his music, but have songs reposted onto YouTube claiming to be posted around 2015 that was released under the name of Young Santos. Boy, don't feel my head with all these lies. That was Fago? Close though, this ain't the right time. I sit on the bed. That would eventually change to Trevenous around 2017. But after dropping multiple songs through 2015 and 2017, he would mostly promote his music using a video game called Roblox. I think I heard that. In 2018, he would officially change his name to Soul Fago and would release his first put together EP called We Are Aliens that ganged him to have a local fan base that also led him to being discovered by Taz Taylor, the founder of the record label that's called Internet Money, who offered to sign him to the label, in which Soul Fago respectfully declined. In 2019, he got a Damn. Would, would he be bigger now if he signed to Internet Money? Because we always talk about opium. And that's like a a given, basically, that if he did sign to OPM, he'd still be hype and everybody would be OK with all of the, let's say, delays in his albums because that's just their brand. But Internet Money, I mean, like they, they got the power to blow up people. Look at Richard Mary right now. He's doing his thing. And they obviously Ian Dior, Juice World, among other artists, even though Juice World wasn't necessarily signed to Internet Money, but he worked with them, Nick Mira specifically. So would he have kept his hype if he signed internet money? Also, I feel like they discovered him before Travis Scott. But again, this is just why you don't sign a bigger artist. K 
connection with the rapper Lil Tecca and began working on a second mixtape called Angela 7 that included the song Knock Knock that would go super viral on social media app TikTok. Making them have a massive explosion in the underground that would have them eventually signing on the Travis Scott Cat the Jet record label. On his Twitter page, he announces the album Pink Hearts on February the 17th of 2021. Then began teasing the album. Cards they became. A I'm just not trying to get copyrighted, so I'm just fast forwarding through the music. His first overhype and long awaited album that he had to drop an EP called Before Pink on June 14 of 2022. After two years of making his fans wait for the album, he finally released it on November the 11th, 2022. With big expectations, his fans was highly disappointed. I don't know, y'all let me know. Y'all let me know in the comments like right now because I, it can't just be me, bro. I don't know if I just expected. I I expected. I, I don't know. I think I. I feel like what happened, and this is just a new theory because we've already talked about this topic. But this is a new idea. That music sometimes isn't even about what it sounds like. It's about the hype of the person, and that it would have been perceived way differently. Pink Hearts, if he dropped it at his prime hype. You know what I'm saying? Like the music could have been literally the exact same. But if he dropped it in 2020 or 2021, 20, 20, 2021, I think, I feel like people would have actually liked it. Expected a different type of vibe to the album, you know what I'm saying? Especially with the songs that blew up Fago, you know what I'm saying? The type of vibes that were in those songs, you know what I'm saying? I expected like these type of vibes in the album, you know what I'm saying? And also it took so long. I expected it to be like, you know, he's taking a long ass time. He's trying to perfect this shit, you know? But right now, I feel like he could do way, way. Did it drop yet? <laughs> Bro, Pink Arts dropped. Hey, better. Like, I want to say six months ago. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to lie. It wasn't my favorite from Fago. Like, I literally put so much faith in Fago. Like, I've been waiting for this album. Like, I really still need to react to Smino's album, Drake and 21's album. Well, I, I could have reacted to those. But I didn't. I wanted to react to this one because I was like, this is the one. I'm not saying Fago's ass. I'm just, I'm already really. Judy says, nah, bro, his past music is just better. I'd agree. I'd agree. That happens to a lot of artists, though. Even like Trippy, Uzi, whatever. Like people, it just happens to move faster nowadays in that because everybody's on the internet all the time, music doesn't live as long and we know this because it's it's fast food at this point like you you got to feed the fans constantly just to keep relevant so with pink hearts um or or sorry his sound got almost like drowned out or saturated faster because again people are consuming music so much faster and so much more at the time you know what i'm saying like soundcloud and all the streaming services made that happen whereas before you would like even when when uzi was coming out i was downloading off dat piff i don't even think uh, spotify wasn't as big back then so i would just listen to that on my ipod like i had a 160 gig ipod and so you listen to that constantly you'd almost appreciate it more ready for his next venture his next album and i just really hope and pray that we get some old fake in there I'm sorry, but if you call in it, I'm here. It's me. It's trash or like, oh, you want the old Fago? Like someone in the, in the chat saying, and it's it's like high production shit. It's not some like underground banger. I keep saying it. That that's just the trend here. Like this actually took effort. This probably took like weeks to actually perfect, rather than some of these people or rappers just be like finishing a song in like a week or, or sorry like a like a day like a night just drop that shit right after you record put on some presets and it's good to go i feel like i was kind of talking it up was i not and i agree like it still was higher production it's just and there there are actually still songs that i like on it like uh out i still listen to out all the time that was one of my favorite i think that is my favorite song on the album and hell yeah of course 
but yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't sound as organic as his older music because it, sometimes when you put too much effort into a project or even in a video or like something that you're creating, a, a piece of content, sometimes the ones, and, and I know YouTubers not, feel me on this, when you put a lot of effort into something, you almost overthink it to the point where it's not even good anymore because you care about it since you're so deep, but most people, they weren't through that whole creative process. And so they just, they just don't care. But the things that you make in a day and it's trendy and all that, it tends to do better. Damn. That he only sold 7,000 copies his first week of his- No, I sold less than that, bro. It sold less than 7,000. I don't know who came up with that figure, but the numbers literally didn't even come out. Release, causing his career reputation to drop, but still has a chance to revive it. Better than the rapper TJX6. Oh, Born God. in Detroit, Michigan, rapper TJX6. Now he's scamming people for 50 bucks. He's like, I'll give you a feature for 50 bucks. At least if you're going to scam a, a fan for a feature, at least charge like 250 or like a rack so that it's believable. But if you're doing 50 bucks, you're basically saying like you're broke, one. And two, you, you're, yeah, your career, you fell off. If you're charging 50 for a feature, that's just, that's just a bad look. This group in a social environment of scammers, hackers, and people who commit fraudulent activities. That he would eventually learn at the young age of just 12 years old how to scam individuals for money. Gradually making enough money that he will drop out of school in the 8th grade but will begin his music career around the age of 16. And dropped his first EP which was a collaboration with his brother Tank K. Kev called No Handouts. Rapping mostly using a Detroit trap flow. Bitch need her hair done, now she calling. Ain't no talking about the trick out that head, then I'm strolling. Niggas rapping, they ain't even got no guns, so why they acting for they talking? Loki, that's hard. I, I never really listened to TJ X6 like that. Leave a nigga on his ass, no but wouldn't have any recognition with his music until he began making songs with rapper Kasha Kwan. A rapper that's not known by many, but changed the Detroit rap scene by simply creating a new music genre that intensely mentioned scams and funny lyrics. Who also at the time had a small buzz in his city that he would heavily influence the way TTX6 was rapping. So he would eventually change his flow and start rapping mostly about his early days and how he scammed people, funny lyrics, or teaching people how to scam. But will heavily focus on teaching people how to scam that he would drop songs like Swipe Stories and Swipe Lessons. Coming up together in his early careers, TJX6, Kasher Kwan, and 10K Kev were all creating music together, but was also grinding in their own way to obtain a small following in the underground, hoping one of them will blow up and bring the rest of the team to the top, which would actually happen in 20. Y'all saying you listen to the scam methods. Did that actually work? Like, I feel like when you publicize a scam method, especially with how big Scam Rap blew up, does. Like when a method gets too big, don't they start fighting back as in the companies and the banks? Like they'll, they'll stop, they'll stop that. They'll put in guards in place to not be able to get scammed in that way. So it's almost like a gimmick. It's like, I'm doing bad things. I just made all this money from this scam. And like, you can do it too, just to get people to listen to it. But then when they actually try it, the scam methods, like they go to jail. So they're, he's essentially dry snitching on all of them. 2018 when Ham and Kesha Kwan dropped a song titled Dynamic Duos. I'm at a pair of the spirit delay my flight. Me and TJ had a show in Miami. Go to tonight. Just got an op address. We gonna go tonight. A couple days later, they was posting this nigga candlelight. He wasn't even from the hood. He was still in that became the start of his rise to fame. But wasn't there yet until he dropped his notorious song that really blew him off card. What happens with. Oh God, here. The section in the video is called In Love With Bitcoin Miners. Born on November 13, 1998, rapper Tokyo Revenge began his rap career at the early age of 15. Oh God. Which he gradually got better at and turned into one of his hobbies. He was one of the first like actual TikTok rappers. Had a song blow up on TikTok. That was him and Cochise, I wanna say. They had the biggest songs on TikTok. 
because this was 2020 when TikTok was really getting big. That's before it became the most visited site or app on your phone or in the world. And so be, being that top spot, like he had so much potential. I'm not going to lie. Due to the and look what happened we haven't heard his name in like three years extremely rough home he grew up in he didn't have enough money to pay for studio time so he began working at a pizza shop then moved out his family house at the age of 17 years old to living on his own causing him to frequently sleep on his friend's couch and sometimes living on the streets um when i first first started um it was oh, damn this is a long ass time ago uh i was couch hop between my boy's crib um because i had nowhere to stay and my boy had it set up with like, a, you know, like a $90 focus right in his piano. Dan began recording his early music on his friend's equipment. Releasing on SoundCloud in 2018 with just singles, he quickly gathered a fan base that he would begin working on his first EP titled MD Night. Released in 2019, that would have two songs titled Good Morning Tokyo and Thought. That would get picked up by Right, those are the two TikTok TikTok and go super viral, hitting over 1 million individuals using his song under that video. While also being compared to XXX and Tashian for having a... I get the comparisons because he had like a soft side to him and was a little bit emotional or a very emotional in those type of tracks. But then he could also be super hard with like the mosh pit, heavy 808 distorted type music. So I get it. But to compare to X, I don't know. It just comes with a little bit more than that. Like with how far X went, you know? Like that's like uh, saying a pop artist. Oh, he's he's supposed to be like the next Michael Jackson. It's like okay, he's got a lot more to prove to get that comparison. Similar flow that some people was calling him an industry plant. There's my video again. <laughs> He was at the peak of his career, not having any allegations onto his name. It was looking like he officially made it out the underground arrow. But as the time passed from 2021 entering 2022, just two months in, sometime around February, his name was dragged into allegations. Getting exposed for allegedly talking explicit to multiple underage minors. Honestly, I don't know what happened, like for a fact, so I'm not going to talk I'm not going to act like I do. However, there was that Discord call on like your rage's Discord server where he admitted it and I'm like if you wanted to if you if you wanted your career to continue and I'm again I'm not condoning anything but deny it. Even criminals who are murking people, you're not going to go into the court case and and tell people, "Oh yeah, I killed him." Yeah, I did it. No, dude, even if even if you did it, you take that shit to the grave if you want a career because now i don't know maybe he's back working at pizza hut instagram user gth star who was at the time 14 year old girl is better than he admitted well i'm not talking about i'm not talking about like morals of course like you don't want people running around doing that but i'm talking about like career wise like if i was his manager Although I probably would have dipped because i'm not going to associate with that but you know what i'm saying like as a label executive if i had an artist I'd just be like, yo, just let that go. I wouldn't even want to know the truth. I'd be like, bro, just stop doing whatever you're doing. Girl, put screenshots of back and forth conversations she had with Tokyo Revenge, who was at the time Ugh. 19 years old. Ugh. Ugh. In disbelief, multiple YouTubers was quick to discover the story and calling him out for his actions. Really think about it. You are on a level where you could get any woman, woman, any woman you want. Grown woman who's not bald by by genetics. It's because they, they, they grow in hair down there because they old enough. And you talk to these young girls, these Facts. little girls, bruh. Facts. These little girls. I'm not only talking to Tokyo. I'm talking to every other fucking up and coming artist that Facts. listens to me and begs me for, yo, can you react to this? Can you, lo, yo, my nigga, can you react to me telling you to stop talking to these little ass kids? Can you react to that? Can you react to what happens when the cops come in and investigate this shit and what's gonna happen to you? Can you and can you react to a fucking to the law, my nigga? No, he couldn't beat the allegation. I remember he even they even uh, blackmailed. I want to say Dante to take down that clip from his YouTube channel because I, I don't know. It was, it was like defamate. They were claiming defamation, and it's like if he admitted it, it's not defamation anymore because. 
it's a fact. So you're not lying. It's literally not illegal to say facts online in a news article or what have you. And then uh, I think it's still off Dante's channel. I mean, I, I understand like he probably just didn't even want the lawsuit because sometimes with rich people slash labels slash corporations, like it doesn't matter who's right or wrong or if you even did anything illegal slash like like a defamation. But they just got the money to continue like they can they can pay these lawyers to just keep the case going where Dante wouldn't have enough enough money to represent himself, you know? And his management team managed to get Twitch streamer I'm Dante to delete his YouTube video you that go. he had him talking about the situation. He would eventually try to apologize on Instagram Live. As someone who's part of the community and part of being a pillar in the community, I want it to be my responsibility to be in the community to discuss stuff. Yeah, he's he's reading off of a, a notes app of what his manager manager wrote like this and to make sure that it's a safe community for everyone who's in the community but comparing his perverted action to the rapper ssg kobe is in fact worse than what you can imagine coming out of louisiana rapper ssg kobe began making music in 2018 at the early age of 15 after being influenced by his cousins who was making music at their home studio starting off he was nervous about sharing his music by the fear of not being appreciated by his local community he eventually got past that and would start posting onto SoundCloud around 2019 and would begin gradually receiving the attention of thousands of listeners and would eventually get recognized by an influencer that goes by the name of Zach Bai who was able to help Kobe into the world of fame using his creative direction. It was in a matter of time before- Wait, Zach Bia's last name is Bial Bialobos? Hold up. Is Wikipedia? of thousands of listeners and would eventually get recognized by an influencer that goes by the name of Zach Bai who was able to help Zach Biala Bialabos Bialabos Kobe into the world of fame using his creative direction it was in a matter of time before things started taking off with SSG Kobe after the song called Thrax Up millions with rapper Snot for a song called Calabasas that it would receive a lyrical lemonade music video that is currently at 6.7 million views. Months later, we have another song titled M.I.A. directed by Cole Bennett that was released on Lyrical Lemonade, reaching over 5.2 million views. His career was heading to the top throughout 2022, being a guest appearance in a Summer Smash live show and going on tour with rapper Young Chris on a 15 city tour produced by Rolling Loud while also having an anticipated album title for UEYA. Ready to be released around December of 2022 or early 2023, would eventually get put on pause completely after a female underground artist by the name of Cash Kenny. Oh, she was an artist. Huh. That opens up a little bit more leeway because it's like, well, was she chasing clout for like the publicity? Although, again, I'm in no position to say that because I, I wasn't there. I'm just saying it increases that. So maybe that could be his defense. But again, he said he was sorry. So that sorry, when you say sorry, it's almost an admission in a way in those texts. Went to post a long put together text allegations on SZ Kobe. Ugh. Stating that he allegedly forced her into having sexual intercourse That had fans not believing it was real and was hoping that it was false allegation Until one of SSD Kobe manager posted two Instagram stories saying Implying that all the allegations held against Kobe's were actually true That had YouTubers, big streamers, and social media news blogs Explaining and sharing the confirmed allegations which caused many fans to be surprised and this belief, SSG Kobe fans then exposed Cash Kenny with again. Mm. If he didn't do it, because I know a lot of SSG Kobe fans are coming out saying like it was just allegations, like that people can't, they're people came with like fake screenshots. I don't know if they're fake, but if you didn't do it, come out and say you didn't do it. That's all you gotta do. It's like the whole. The whole Frank Ocean situation just, just you can turn every L into a W just by fighting it, denying it. Again, if he if he actually didn't do it, if he did do it, like he needed to leave. But screenshots messages with back and forth conversation to her cousin that she had allegedly faked the situation. 
but quickly got debunked. Wait, allegedly. what? It appears that lie. So Richard Mary was defending. I'm confused. Fake the situation, or was he just questioning the fake screenshots? But quickly got debunked after she responded with proof that the messages with her. And okay, there we go. Her cousin was fake. Damn. But as of right now, this record and fans are currently waiting on what SSZ Kobe have to say about this full situation. Which he apparently did through a Discord discussing the alleged allegation that everybody knew at that moment that he was guilty on how he wrote the response. Yeah. He it's cause he said sorry. That's like admission. Alright, but damn, I, I see some of y'all saying Jace was worse than all these i beg to differ i feel like yes being a snitch is bad in the rap community but technically speaking like you're cooperating with the law which ethically is better you know like i'd rather have a friend who's a snitch than somebody who touching bitcoin miners would y'all not like i'm not trying to be around that but i i I wouldn't prefer having a friend who's a snitch, but like it, it's a little bit safer. Like you just gotta be a law abiding citizen around a snitch. Whereas with the other one, I don't know, man. Like you can't even hang out with them because you might go, you might be chilling with them, meeting, going to McDonald's, getting a burger, and all of a sudden, like, <laughs> you know, some toddlers be showing up trying to get some, some uh, McDonald's Sprite, and you don't want any part of that. But yeah, so what I was, I was saying, Jace, I think he like he's still making music. He still has a career like you. You can come back from that. Maybe not to the potential that he was supposed to have. But. Uh, he, he can still be have a career, especially if he went more in the alternative lane, which he does have music for, you know, like they don't really care about that as much. It's really just the hip hop community that cares about snitches to that degree. Now, when we went over the paperwork he was part of the crime jace like he was pistol whipping people so he was snitching even though he did it too which is kind of lame but still but in the meanwhile y'all go follow my instagram sad but yeah he couldn't drop the biggest remix of the year yeah he was supposed to have that offset and like what who was it money baggy or is it g herbo the lyrical lemonade music video where did that go that was just completely canceled so he missed out on a big bag there, unfortunately.